It is a privilege. It's always a privilege to get to visit with Coach Terry Harrison, the head football coach for the Friends Falcons here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. And Coach, it's bye week in Wichita. Of course, the uh, the Heart of America Conference, the KCAC, pretty much just both taking this week to say, oh, we'll just take a little time, come back with uh, the rest of our schedule after these messages, basically. Uh, but uh, I was looking on Twitter and I saw from your account a nice picture of Arrowhead Stadium on Monday. So is that how bye week goes in Wichita? Are you still watching football? <laughs> well, not normally. You know, we have a we have an awesome uh, friend of our program who's a who's a Kansas City Chiefs season ticket holder. And, you know, before the season, he, he, he wanted us to be able to experience that. So I was able to take my wife. Um, my two daughters and then some of our staff and some other kids and and took our kids to to go watch the Chiefs play at Arrowhead. And so, you know, it was a lot of fun and extremely loud. If you've never been there, very passionate fans. So oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm very good at being a fan and sitting in the, in the bleachers necessarily, but it was it was a cool experience. It was the first NFL game I've ever watched. And, um, yeah, we were there doing our thing. And it was Monday night, big deal. And so the Royals were playing across the way. So, yeah, we took that all in and had a great time as a family. And, it was kind of a nice little breather from, I guess, the normal day to day. It really is. And, and I have been there. My wife's from around the area. I've seen games in both of those uh, facilities there at Truman Complex. And it's, uh, it's, it's a great place. You're exactly right to get to go watch a game. But you know what? Uh, I know that uh, Wichita is a great place to get to go watch a game as well. 6-0 and on the season. Friends starting off fantastic for the 2024 schedule. You know, one of three teams in the Kessinger division undefeated going into this bye week. We'll talk about those other teams a little bit later on. I want to hear your perspective on the great start to the season for friends. Yeah, you know, we we feel like we've kind of picked up right where we left off last year. You know, we had a really great year last year and, you know, just came up just a little bit short of postseason play, but, you know, returned so many players um, that, you know, we just have a good experienced age group, a group and, you know, we're all, our new guys kind of took right into our team culture and have kind of, like I said, hit the ground running. And so it's been very, it's been awesome, awesome first, um, you know, six games. The really cool part has been, you know, we've been able to lean on that experience and have some really great first halves. And our, um, our starters have only played the second half in one game. And so the really cool part is that we've been, been able to establish some future wins by playing our, our, you know, twos, three, JV group, whatever you want to call it, our younger players in our program in the second half of games. And quite honestly, we've, we've won the second half of all of those games as well. So, you know, and they're playing against the other team stars. So it just points to, you know, continued success here. And, you know, we're a program that we, we are in this thing long term. We want to develop this thing for the future and not just be in the here and now. I um, mean, so it's been really fun to watch the returners play so well and then what that means for the future of our program as well. So that's been, you know, been very cool. And maybe you don't see that when you see the scores, you know, and people that aren't at the game or watching it live don't understand, you know, the commitment we made to develop our program for the long term. And so it's been really cool, you know, first half of, uh, of the season. And, and you're not in it just for the numbers, but the numbers are compiling themselves mm -hmm. even while you do that. I want to talk about those numbers in a little bit, but I want to talk about one win in particular. And it was a big win, the Kansas Wesleyan win, and it comes down to a walk-off 40-yard field goal by Cole Thompson. And Kansas Wesleyan had had friends number for quite a while. So this one, I think, was one that uh, whether or not you circled it prior to playing the game i mean it's it's one you look back on i'm sure and maybe even already have some to say yeah that that went over the coyotes was big yeah it, it was you know it was a big game for our program for our school i mean if you look at the last four-year trend i think two or three three years before we got here you know friends lost that game 83 to 0 70 something to 0 in our first year here at kansas wesson we we were beaten 70 to 0 by kansas wesson in year one here and so to look and then year two, we lost that game in a heartbreaker last year, 35 to 28, you know, fumbling it going into score and then to come on top this year. I think it just tells you, you know, where our program is headed, you know, and maybe, you know, not necessarily a comparison, but, you know, what our program is definitely trending up. And so to overcome that, you know, we had players on our team that had, had been beaten by Ken Swesson by those 70 and 80 points. And just to see the culture of our program, you know, moving in a direction, we're able to make a, you know, we it was a 90, you know, we got the ball on the one to, to be able to drive down the field in a two minute drill. Um, we had one timeout at the time, you know, to be able to punch in a field goal to win the game. I mean, it just speaks to our kids and our, and our team culture. And I think that's, you know, I don't know, that's probably what I'm most proud of is to look at overcoming, you know, the, the past of Fringe University. Because while, while it doesn't matter, I think it's certainly always in the back of your mind. You know, and, and as a staff, we hadn't beat Fringe University even in our time at Bethel 
even though, I mean, we've ran for a bunch of yards, scored a bunch of points. Man, it just seems like we've always come up short in the turnover game. And then so the, to be able to over, overcome that and beat them, it was just a big, really big for our program, big for Fringe University. You know, everybody really wanted. You could kind of feel that in the air, which kind of makes it even harder to do. <laughs> you know, you, you almost can want it too much. Um, but it was it was definitely a win I'll remember. And, you know, we, we definitely didn't play perfectly. We, we did turn the ball over. They did return a kickoff for a touchdown at an untimely spot. We were kind of going in to go up two scores in the third quarter, and they returned one. But to still be able to come out on top, I think it just tells you I mean, we have we have a really good group of kids who are absolute winners right now who, um you know, who won't shy away from really any competition. Coach, and, and you mentioned that, too. It, it, it doesn't matter when you look back to the past. But, hey, listen, this is one you want at home. And the fan base knows. I mean, the, the the faithful, the Falcons faithful that have been there year after year, I mean, they know. They recognize it. They know it's a big deal. They've they've seen the, the wins and losses or losses more, I guess, in this case. But you you mentioned something else, too. I mean, you, you come back down, start at the one-yard line. This is an offense that's not one that, you know, you're just going to get somebody back up and fire down the field 30 yards and pick up, you know, 55 yards in two chunks just through the air. I mean, you, you had to make that happen on that final drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, we we don't necessarily practice those scenarios completely, and we really haven't been in them because we won games so big. Um, so to see our guys execute, we were clocking the ball. You know, we had we had a list of things we knew, like, hey, in a pinch, these are some plays that we really like, and we were able to utilize those, you know, that we save for that scenario. And so, you know, it worked out really well, and we actually, <coughs> excuse me, almost broke one and scored um, even before we had to kick the field goal. So, you know, our offense played really great all night. I, we had 500 yards of offense, I think. We outpassed Kansas Wesleyan. We outrushed Kansas Wesleyan. Um, and so, you know, it was a rainy night. There was some lightning delay. So that that also makes it weird. But like you mentioned right there, for those guys to be able to – our guys to be able to go out and execute, um, you know, in that last uh, – however many yards we had to end up having to get down there was so, so impressive. And I was just happy for them. And, you know, then for all of our families to be on the field after, there was, you know, a lot of laughing and crying and all that good stuff <laughs> because people were so excited for our program. It was really cool. We're visiting now with Terry Harrison from Friends University here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you, please do subscribe to the channel. I have zero idea as to what it does for the algorithm and the purpose there, but we like it and think it helps and it's encouraging. So I just uh, please subscribe and be a part of the of the fun here as we're talking about NAI football during the fall in 2024. Coach, I am going to look at these numbers here. 446 rushing yards per game, 4,000. You're on pace for 4,906 yards in an 11 game regular season. Now, postseason, I, I know that's too far ahead. I'm not going to ask you to even think about uh, beyond the 11 game regular season. But uh, I, honestly, the quick math on this, I think it's kind of fun. You just need to average about nine and a half more yards per game, coach, to, to get to where you would hit 5,000 in 11 games. And this is at a larger pace that you're picking up yards in last year, and that was the fourth largest total in NAI history. So talk a little bit about this game, this offensive game, and, and how you're picking up those yards. And, and just uh, we'll talk about some individual players in a moment. Yeah, I think, you know, there, we're, you know, it's the flex point offense is a little bit, you know, misunderstood. And there's so many things that are said about it, which are complete myth and not true. Um, you know, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But in the end, we, we don't really care. Um, we want to win. And we, we feel like this does give us our best opportunity to win. And we have a, you know, a personnel group that, that really fits what we do. Um, but like you mentioned, <clears throat> you know, we're we're on pace to have the best year we've ever had offensively. Um, at one point, I haven't looked this week because we kind of don't worry about it necessarily, but right, we were leading the country in total yards. And so flex bone, not flex bone, we, we, we've, we've gained more yards than anyone in the country. And, you know, we've been, been fortunate enough, like we mentioned, to be playing our, our backups and our younger guys in the second half. And so, you know, hopefully, I guess it doesn't matter if people take notice of that, maybe national Raiders or whatever that even looks like. But the reality is we have a very talented group. Um, by per my understanding, we were the first team out of the playoffs last year, and we returned basically everybody in our program, and we're clicking on all cylinders right now. So I certainly think, you know, every, all the you know recognition we've been getting is, is definitely deserved and, and maybe a little underrated in some aspects. But we we've, we've got our great offense that we really love, and our defense is playing absolutely lights right lights out right now. And again, um, just what we've really had to focus on is 
kind of focus on ourselves. And, and I think it's been showing, you know, like you mentioned, the fact that we can put in our extra guys and, and keep clicking on all cylinders. It just speaks to, you know, our coaching staff and then our kids' ability to practice really hard every day and be prepared to play. Well, it's well documented on this channel how I felt about you all making or not making the playoffs last season. So I won't rehash that. I will say, however, though, you know, it, it does warrant attention. And I think you don't have to look that much farther than Division Two in the NCAA. And uh, I do a lot of work with the Great American Conference and Harding, the, the Bisons, put up phenomenal numbers last year, almost every bit of it on the ground, and they went 15-0 and and won a national championship. So it's not unprecedented, mm-hmm. even in the 21st century. I mean, I'm not looking back to, you know, OU Sooner days of the 70s and 80s, but it's not unprecedented to see that kind of, of offensive attack have – success in the playoffs and, and run it on through. Cavante Baker back for another season, and, and he's leading the team nine rushing touchdowns. You have 29 uh, rushing touchdowns spread out over 10 players. Of course, you've already talked about being able to put a lot of players in there. Elias Pino leading the team at 100.2 rushing yards per game, and it's an offense that is. Uh, even if you weren't putting in those other players, it's still spread out because the attack, you never know where it's going to come from. Talk about a couple of those individual players. Well, yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, it's really no different than if you're a five wide team and you're throwing to different people all over the field. You know, what we do is absolutely, you know, it's no different at all. You have to defend the whole field and you have to defend every player and you really can't just key in on one. You know, I'm really proud of those guys, especially Cavante. We've actually, we've just been very deliberate about limiting him a little bit. You know, last year we were a little bit new to the scene on the national scene, I guess you would say. And so, you know, he, he might have had some more carries by this point and maybe some more touchdowns. Um, but for us, our program goals are so much more than, you know, being 6-0, and right? We have way bigger goals than that. And so we've tried to manage his carries and workload a little bit um, and spread the ball around a little bit. And the same thing with Elias. You know, Elias hasn't played actually the last couple games. He's totally fine and he'll be good for the divisional matchups. But he had a little bit of a shoulder injury. So we were just like, you know what? He, he dressed out for every game, but we, we were able to hold him out. And we've been able to do the same thing for some of our offensive linemen as well. Just the, you know, football's physical. College football's really hard on bodies. And so it's really one of the benefits of being so deep across all positions as we've been able to play guys and not lose anything. But no, like you mentioned, Cavante, more than anything, he's he's a phenomenal football player. If you're watching this and if you, if you have not seen him play in person, you are absolutely missing out. Um, you've got this year and next year to do it. And you should definitely make, a, make it a point to watch him play because he's absolutely electric. And he's surrounded by really good football players as well, you know, like the kids that you mentioned. And so it's, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about him and enjoying it. And even more than that, He's an even better person and a better kid, and and honestly, couldn't be more proud of him, especially having coached him in high school, what he's been able to do, and just see him just as a human being, just the type of kid he is, couldn't be a better representative of Fringe University. I have to tell you, Coach, the goal is to see Cavante this year. Now, with uh, some interesting things uh, in the course of my life over the summer, we'll see, but uh, definitely by next year for sure. You mentioned briefly the, the defense and, and the defense is playing lights out. Well, 10.5 points per game over a six game period. And, and the, honestly, nearly half of that in the Kansas Wesleyan game alone, the defense mm-hmm. is really taking care of business on its end. Yeah, exactly. And, and some of the, we gave up a kick return for a touchdown as well. So that doesn't help their yeah. stats at all, even though they weren't on the field, you know, uh, but no, they, they think about that though. They see the bottom line. They see the, yeah. number, they, you know, <laughs> recognize it's a special teams or, you know, or a pick six or something. Yeah. Well, you know, it is everything it is all on the entire game is built against defense nowadays. So you're, you're already at a disadvantage. You just got to be tough, you know, but no, they, we've been playing, uh, playing really well. I think we're leading the country in sacks, tackles for loss which is kind of where we want to be. And we're up there in interceptions. Well, if not leading, <clears throat> we're in the top. And so that's kind of our brand of football, you know, and I think that's kind of the, you know, I think that's the thing what, what probably when people watch us play, which makes us not a very fun matchup is we're, we're going to be able to run the football. We're going to be extremely physical. And even more than that, we're really explosive. And then when you add that with well, a defense that's leading the countries in sacks and tackles for loss, it's just a, you know, it can be, it can be a tough matchup, especially with the level of talent we have right now. So they've done extremely, extremely well. Um, and, you know, we have a bunch of returners there as well. So very proud of those guys and, and what they've been able to do. All right, Coach. Well, I, I want to wrap up our time in talking about then what's coming up. And I, it's, it's one of those things, too. I, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, so I'll say it from the media perspective. The next two games, I mean, the, the season doesn't come down to this, but wow. I mean, it's a, it's a big part of, of what it would take to get you into the playoffs as to how you fare against these two teams in the Kessinger division. And you start off divisional play 
next Saturday, October 19th. It's going to be on the road, not that far down the road. And I know this is a big matchup any way around, but in Winfield as you take on an undefeated Southwestern team who's rocking and rolling right now. And mm-hmm. then the next week is against a team that, uh, well, got the better of you last year. A few turnovers may have made the difference in that game too, but you get Evangel at home there in Wichita. That is on October 26th. Now, uh, fortunately, you, you've had the bye week right now to rest a little bit, and maybe players get to watch OU Texas or whatever their favorite game is coming up this weekend. But then it's it's business next week. Yeah, yeah, huge matchups for us. And, and like you mentioned, both those programs are playing, you know, extremely well right now. We, you know, we've been able to watch those guys, you know, throughout the, you know, the first six games. You always kind of take a peek at those guys, just mm-hmm. kind of see what's going on. But, you know, Southwestern is going to be as deep of a team as we played um, you know, I think they're they they're, they might even have moved above us in the rankings. So clearly, you know, the coaches across the country think they're you know they're they're good and if not better than us. And so, man, what a huge huge uh, challenge for us. And, and going in as the underdogs, I guess, is what you would say, right? So, we, you know, we we played really well against them last year. I think they were number six in the country at the time, and we were bit, we were able to come out on top. So we're we're really excited to play them, especially on the road. It's going to be a playoff type atmosphere, and so you know our guys will be ready to play. I know our coaching staff certainly excited for it. You know, we're going to give it our best shot. And, you know, if we're not good enough on any given Saturday, you know, that's OK, because we know we're going to prepare um, really well. And our guys are going to go lay it on the line. We don't if we lack anything, it is definitely not our guys playing hard and caring very, very deeply every Saturday. So that that's exciting. And then, like you mentioned, being able to host Evangel, um, you know, there's such a good program. <clears throat> you know, we weren't able to give it our best shot last year against those guys necessarily. And, and you know, they beat us. And that's simply, you know, there are no excuses. Right. They, they beat us and they were better than us on that day. So I can tell you for us, we know our whole program is built around this five weeks of the year, right? The the last five games, divisional play. And while we're certainly proud of our first six, you know, this really is what it's all about. And our kids know that. And you can see it in our kids' eyes. They're, they're certainly proud and they're definitely confident as they should be. But more than that, you know, they're extremely hung, hungry and humble, you know, and they're, and they're ready to go lay it on the line. And so it'll be it'll be really fun. You know, and then even looking past that, you know, McPherson is five and one. I think they're a really good team. Um, Bethel's five. Uh, four, I can't remember now, but Bethel's played really well at times. Um, and so Bethany's improved. So, man, there's definitely no no taking a break. The last five games, we have to be playing our best football. And we're we're excited for that challenge for sure. No, I, and I agree with you. By the way, a couple of notes about the Kessinger division too. I, I, Bethany is is coming back, and uh, and I think they may surprise somebody in divisional play. I think that that's not out of the the realm of possibility, no matter whom it may be. And then from the uh, the NAIA national rankings, not ratings. Uh, just you look at that those numbers there and where they are, coach. I think there are some some people who are voting in this poll who are just waiting to see what's going to happen in the next two weeks because Evangel in at number nineteen. And uh, yeah, you're right. It was a tie there at 22, but uh, have Southwestern ahead of you at 22 right now and friends at 23. Again, this is in the the, the NAI coaches rankings, not ratings uh, nationally, uh, the official poll there for the NAI. And uh, like I said, I, I think they're just kind of waiting to see who's going to come out on top and, and push them on up from there in those rankings. They, they shouldn't be as important as they are. This is my opinion now, not speaking for Coach Harrison. But they are, and it does make a difference at the end of the season where you are in this national poll. So it is something to watch as well. But the Friends Falcons just rolling in 2024 so far, just past the midpoint, 6-0, and heading into Kessinger Division play, and it, it should be fun to watch. Coach, it's always a privilege to have you on the program. I don't take that lightly, but uh, I enjoy the visit as well, and, and uh, we'll continue to follow the Falcons for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you for having me.